Hi, I'm Ollie Matthews. This is The Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Nelly, and here's her story. Hi, Ollie. What's your take on only children? I grew up as an only child and feel I yo-yoed between being made a golden child and a scapegoat. As a result, I think I fa have found an average, and I can relate to strangers in a normal way, but I also can switch cluster B behaviors and thoughts on and off basically at will. However, I also try to have I also try to have a stricter ethical reasoning in my behavior towards strangers than with my parents. Thoughts. Only children, you know, you have basically only child entitlement where the reason you you treat strangers ethic more ethically than your parents is because in your mind in and we've talked because me, me and Nelly Skype a lot. Um, Nelly will admit she's spoiled, and it's it's one of her issues that that she's dealing with. Um, after uh, after her parents got divorced when she was thirteen was basically the root of her issues. She's an only child, and. She basically lives her life through her mother's eyes and the control of her mother. There's not a decision that Nellie makes in her life without having to first consult with her mother, think about how it's going to affect her mother. I mean, it's basic stuff right to whether or not she can go out with friends to the movies. And this is, this is a girl, this is a woman who's almost 30 years old. So... Her parents got a divorce. You know, both her mother and her father have narcissistic issues. Obviously, her mother to me is a borderline, borderline control. But it appears that her dad gets the preponderance of the blame for all of it, even knowing that her mother is pretty much the root of most of her issues. Relatedly, my parents had a fine old time using me as a go-between flying monkey against each other. Before going no contact with one of them, I had no scruples playing that part because I was fed up of their nonsense and just wanted them to take up less of my time. This explains some of the behaviors in your videos too. One recent one was that your daughter's letter to her aunt Christy Personally, I don't buy that one. No disrespect to the lady who wrote who wrote in with it. And another one, and another was in the story of the poor woman. I really did sympathize with her, who witnessed the death of her husband on the bathroom floor, and some borderline sister-in-law. I think had her daughter defend her shitty behavior through Facebook messages. In both cases, the daughters wouldn't have had to write anything if the parent generation had any backbone and proper boundaries ability to tell people where to get off. I think sometimes when people appear willing to perform as a flying monkey, it is the most efficient way of cutting short the bullshit rather than feeding the drama. Not always, but when it's the younger generation doing it more often than not. Having said that, as you know, I am starting a process of lower, not low by a long shot, contact with my mother and some contact with my dad. When we talked on Skype, what we didn't get around to talking about is that I'm tapping into some narcissistic supply from this engagement with my dad and conversations I initiate with my mother about my dad and his family. I don't think this is good for me. I want to keep talking to my dad, but I'm not sure it is worth it as I don't think he can give me the closure I am seeking. And in the meanwhile, this engagement is bringing out manipulative behavior and destructive instincts in me. I can see that, Nelly. I can see that, Nelly. I issued him a niggle of guilt last week about a cat he didn't manage to keep. I never met the animal. This was with his new family. She's talking about her dad. Nothing to ruin, nothing to ruin his day. 
but I timed it well and know he'd be a little distracted by it whenever he found himself at leisure. Subsequently, I had as much bounce and cheerfulness as a normal person as I went about my business for the rest of the day. Should I go back to no contact and if I continue, what makes this relationship worth it? What is the experience of your subscribers in deciding and managing levels of contact with their nutty parents? I think as a result of the only child scapegoat development, I struggle to regulate my energy level and attention. Through my work with children, I observe that attention and engagement with, tact, with, with tasks are an aspect of behavior that can be learned and improved, but I have found it hard to apply what I can do for other people to myself. In her video, Charlene's attention has been discussed. I want to raise that topic again. What is your experience? What, is, what about other listeners, subscribers? Thanks, Nellie. Well, Nellie, you know, you're walking a very dangerous line here. And I kind of got into it with you the last time we Skyped because you are very close to falling into line with your mother and being a borderline narcissist. I just got to lay that out there. The judgments you're making about, you know, people's stories on the channel, whether or not you... That is the same thing your mother does. That is the same thing you're talking about what your mother did to your father, your mother does to your boyfriend. So you're going to, and I, and I kind of told you this in a little bit of a different way yesterday, but I'm just going to tell you that you're at a, you're at a crossroad yourself now. You know this isn't right. This is damaging you. You know it. And you are at a crossroad. Either you are going to go the way of your mother. Because you're obviously taking on her manipulative tactics and deriving calculated supply from it. You're calculating timing of telling them this for maximum effect. You need to get a hold of this real quick because you are walking a very, very dangerous line here. The same judgments you're, you were complaining your mother making about you and your friends and your boyfriend and your life, you're here doing the same thing to people whether you believe their stories or not on my channel. A lot of that does come from being an only child. It's an only child type of mentality. And when you were an old, grown, grown up an only child till 13, 14, and then the divorce as an only child, you took it even harder. So I think what you're doing is you're looking to punish your father. And I told you this, you're looking to punish your father, even though you understand a lot of the reasons why he left. There are other issues you didn't mention in here that I'm not I'm not gonna bring up. With your dad, your dad got remarried. And you admitted yourself that you are very spoiled and you want what you want and you can go pretty skits when you don't get your get your way. So the question you really have to ask yourself here now, not not you know, how am I going to rat? It's because I'm an only child. It's because my mother's a borderline. My father's a narcissist. We got all that. Got all of it. And the point I was trying to make to you is what do you want to do now? What do you want? What is it that you want? Not through your mother's eyes to avoid the argument and the fight with your mother. What do you want? Be honest about it. If all you want is for your parents to give you money, for you not to work, for you to work, to just be honest about it. So at least everybody knows where you stand. Everybody needs to know where you stand so at least we know where the jump off point is. If you're miserable like this, living your life like this, and you're unhappy, 
Okay, you're at the you're at a crossroad here, because you are dangerously close to just becoming a full blown narcissist like your mother, full blown borderline making the choice. So either you're going to go with it, or you're going to say, you know what, I got to change this. I got to change this now. Whether or not you're an only child or not, yeah, it, it plays a factor in it, but it can't be used as an excuse. And I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but I just want to make sure it isn't. Tapping into narcissism, using your father to tap into narcissistic supply is exactly right. It's detrimental. It's dangerous. And then what happens? What happens after that? Who do you move on to if you keep going? You just gonna keep it up with him? Then what? What happens when he got when he dies? Because he's older. He had he got remarried later in life. Your parents were already married for 30 years, 35 years before they got divorced when you were 14. Then what are you gonna do? You gonna turn it on your half brother and sister? Is that what you wanna do? You are at your crossroad here. You're either going to become exactly like your mother or you are going to change your life. I, that's as honest as I can make it for you, Nelly. And we got into this on Skype. And I know you want to be called out, so there it is. And, you know... Thank you again for coming to me and, you know, for your support and the story. I appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. She wants to, she wants to hear it. You're at a crossroad, Nelly. You're at a big decision point. So be smart about it. If you want your story read on the channel, if you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, or you'd like to set up a Skype private phone call, have a private video made, Facebook chat, or you'd just like to contribute to the channel or sponsor a video for someone else who can't afford it, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. And if you're still unclear, wait for the final video link to pop up on this video, which will take you to my instructional video, which will walk you through all of that. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ali Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance.